This is Ethan, and I'm here with Dave, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 161-inch. On this episode, we dive back into the archives and present Ethan's second interview with Weird Al's longtime guitar player, Jim Kimo West, as recorded back in 2011. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al it's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000 inch Weird Al podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. Dave and Ethan's 2,000 inch Weird Al podcast. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Dave and Ethan's 2,000 inch Weird Al podcast. Welcome one and all to episode 161 inch. We hope you enjoyed last episode where we dug deep into my audio archives and aired my first ever interview with the now Grammy award winning Jim Kimo West as it originally aired back on my college radio show Alternative to Sleeping with Ethan Ullman. Ethan, it is always such a huge pleasure to hear all these old interviews that you did with the band. Well, thank you, Dave. How about we keep the fun rolling with my other interview with the now Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West? That is such a great idea. But Ethan, you know, I must admit, I'm a little bit confused about something that Kimo said in the interview that we aired on the last episode, episode 160 inch. Oh, what's that? Well, in the interview... Kimo tells the story about how he came to join the band. Well, I couldn't help but notice it totally, totally contradicts what Weird Al says up on stage during the unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour. Well, damn, I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for that, which is uh, history's fluid. And, and you see... Whoa! Sounds like we've got a message on the 347 Spatula Hotline, the official hotline of Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Oh, yeah. On the last episode, we said we'd get to all of our spatula messages on this episode. Oh, you know what, Dave? I bet it's UH Jeff with that follow-up about playing the Weird Al pinball machine. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's got to be Jeff. He was supposed to call back weeks ago with the full report. Well, all right, intern Frank, let's hear UH Jeff's Long-awaited spatula message. Hello, Dave and Ethan. This is Scott Sorensen calling in for the first time ever. I have called in with Jeff and Adriana and Kenneth, but I'm never by myself, so here we are. Anyway, I posted on the Facebook page for the 2000-inch Weird Al podcast about a new cat I'm getting, a new fur baby. And I had asked for possible name suggestions, Weird Al-related if possible. And I must say, I've got some great suggestions. Zelda... Peaches, you know, hair the color of strained peaches since she's a ginger baby, and Melanie, to name three. Unfortunately, Melanie is the name of an ex, so that will not fly. My other favorite was Star, after the bi-monthly Weird Al magazine, Midnight Star. But, as the listeners might know, Weird Al is key to all of our lives, and any other suggestions would be amazing. I love the podcast, love Weird Al, and I love everything. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you for that call, Scott. If you want to see a picture of the adorable, cute little kitten that Scott is talking about, head on over to group.2000inch.com to see her and to leave name suggestions. Well, Dave, you got to hear my suggestion for Scott's cat. Sure, I'd love to hear it. So because it's such a cute little tiny cat and the pictures make it seem just so adorable, I think the absolute best name would be... Big Edna! I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really love the name Zelda because she does have the hair the color of strained peaches, but I think I'm going to go with Invisible Jim. <laughs> okay, okay, this has got to be UH Jeff, right? Right, of course. All right, take it away, intern Frank. Hey, Dave and Ethan, it's your old pal Chris, the cartoon-loving geek from Canada. Hey, listen... You remember when you guys asked me to take care of that collectible autographed hooded Avenger wall clock of yours while you guys are out seeing Al's Vanity Tour concerts? Well, guess what? That old wall clock of yours is telling me that once again it's time for... Ethan's birthday! Happy birthday, Ethan, old buddy. And to celebrate the occasion, I actually got you something special that I ordered online from this really neat shop. But unfortunately, I received an email from the site informing me that the plane carrying your special item apparently crashed into the Atlantic Ocean and is now most likely rusting away at the bottom of the sea. 
And worst of all, it was the last one in stock. Why do these things always have to happen to me? Well, don't despair, though, good buddy, because I took the liberty of drawing your birthday gift so you can get a rough idea of what it would have looked like when it arrived on your doorstep. Yeah, 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 I know, it's not the same thing. But I want you to know I meant well, and I still hope you like it. And in case you're wondering, Dave, yes, I also ordered something online from the same shop for your birthday, too. And as long as no bizarre occurrences happen from now until July, knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood, Hopefully you'll be getting yours just in time for your special day. So until next time, have a happy birthday, Ethan. You guys enjoy those concerts, and I'll catch you later. Oh, and uh, Frank, if you're listening, no, you're not getting any birthday gifts from me. And no, it's not because I don't know when your birthday is. It's because I know what you did last April the 27th. Yeah, that's right, you slimy little slug. I caught you eating pancakes at that hotel IHOP diner across the street from the Waffle King restaurant. Seriously, Frank, how could you do such a horrible thing? What did the Waffle King ever do to you, huh? You make me want to puke, you know that? Oh, yeah, intern Frank makes me want to puke, too. Anyway, Chris, I am really excited to see what you got me for my birthday. I really, really hope that no bizarre occurrences happen from now until July. Knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood. Yes, thank you so much, Chris, for the amazing call. And thank you for this incredible, pretty stinking majestic birthday drawing. Hey, Ethan, what's on that drawing that Chris sent you? Why, it's a drawing of the special deluxe edition Weasel Stomper 2001. It was exactly what I was looking for. I'm so bummed to hear about the plane crash. It's such a great machine with a boot attached to it for weasel stomping. And as we all know, weasel stomping day is coming up, Dave. What an incredibly thoughtful gift. And what better way to spend weasel stomping day than with a special deluxe edition weasel stomper 2001. Oh yeah, and Chris's message does remind me that it was your birthday back on May 29th. Now, I did wish you a happy birthday in person and on Ridiculously Self-Indulgent Bonus Episode 16 Centimeter and again on Ridiculously Self-Indulgent Bonus Episode 17 Centimeter. But seeing as our intern Frank hasn't posted those yet, from all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000's Weird Al Podcast, Happy birthday, Ethan. Why, thank you, Dave, and, and everyone else at Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. Now, it was incredibly cool to get to see Weird Al at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, on my birthday with so many friends and loved ones. Now, I already know the answer to this, but did anyone special send you that Weird Al American Greetings birthday video? Oh, absolutely! There's probably a dozen people that sent it to me, and I tell you what, I watched every single one, even the one I got from a special someone. Aw, thank you, Ethan. Yes, it was me. I did send you a Weird Al American Greetings birthday video. Oh, yeah, you're right. You sent me one, too. What do you mean, two? I wasn't the special someone you just mentioned? Uh, well, this is awkward. I, I mean, Dave, thank you. Thank you, but um, Weird Al himself sent me one, so he takes the cake for the specialist one. Yeah, but did he actually send it to you on your birthday? Not only did he send it on my birthday, he had my age in the video correct, and he had my name correct! Well, 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 alright, now that's pretty stinking majestic. Let's move on to what's happening in Weird Al related news! Weird Al is still out on the road for his unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent ill-advised vanity tour. And that's not all. A brand new tour date was just announced September 17th in Santa Clarita, California. Tickets for the show at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center go on sale to the general public this coming Friday, June 17th. And we believe this to be the last tour date to be announced as it brings the total of all announced shows to the advertised 100 33. You know, if intern Frank's math is correct. And for all of our fellow Weird Al collectors, we know you are out there. There is a brand new item at the merchandise booth. There is a Weird Al branded coffee tin to store your Weird Al branded coffee in. Now this weekend, Dave and I intend to attend both shows in Los Angeles and also the shows in Santa Barbara and Bakersfield, California. So if you will be at any of these shows, please stop by and say hi. We just got in some brand new stickers they just arrived and we want to be able to give them to you. 
And if you can't make it to those shows, we do plan to record ridiculously self-indulgent bonus episodes for each of them, so you'll get to hear all about them. And speaking of our ridiculously self-indulgent bonus episodes, we have recorded up through bonus episode 20 centimeter already, and our intern Frank has been busy putting the finishing touches on them. As soon as our intern Frank is done, I'm sure that he'll post them for our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family over on our official Patreon page. Now be sure to join the coolest group of cool people ever who get to hear our bonus episodes early by joining our Patreon family over at patreon.com slash 2000 inch. And if you're a cheapskate, I mean, if you're part of the general public, stay tuned because our bonus episodes will drop for you eventually. This episode is brought to you in part by vegan burrito restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double-wrapped in a quesadilla Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering, loaded, dare I say beefy, vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world plant-based real food. Always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com and wizardburger.com to order ahead. Last week, Weird Al shared a clip from the game show The Weakest Link on his social media. The question was, I Love Rocky Road and Like a Surgeon are two of the song parodies performed by what singer? Well, Dave, before I ask if you know this answer, let me share what the contestant Rochelle said. Rochelle answered, Bono? To which the host, Jane Lynch, said, No, Weird Al Yankovic. Wow, can you believe it? But they both got that answer wrong. Obviously, the correct answer is Red Rump Agouti. A season four, volume one of Stranger Things dropped on May 27th on Netflix. And once again, it features a reference to Weird Al. That's right. One of the episodes features the line, quote, You were wearing a Weird Al t-shirt, which I thought was brave from all of us here at dave and ethan's 2000 inch weird al podcast we agree that is the single bravest thing we can think of doing lego star wars summer vacation has been announced by disney plus and we are thrilled to hear that it will feature guest star weird al now will weird al be playing for Lom, as he did in star wars detours or will he be playing yoda yoda or will he be voicing himself? The only way to know is if we can find someone to leak that information, or I suppose we can just wait for it to drop on Disney Plus on August 5th. Our friend and former guest Kevin McKee let us know that the June 14th USA Today crossword puzzle featured a Weird Al related clue. 13 across, genre for Weird Al, five letters. Now, this is more than five letters, and I'm not sure it makes sense, but, uh, Red Rump the Goody? Well, actually, the answer was Polka, but very close, Dave, very close. Be sure to scour all hotel lobbies and third grade classrooms for a copy of USA Today. Now, Mike Minnick, our friend, former supporter, and co-host of the hypothetical Living in Weird Al's Fridge podcast, let us know that Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast had an appearance on the YouTube channel... For whatever reason. For whatever reason primarily features the host Aaron reacting to various videos and music. And this week he reacted to the clip of Weird Al's appearance on Circus of the Stars. But that's not all. After watching the clip, Aaron also watched the mashup that Dice Equilibrium made featuring our interview with Weird Al talking all about his experience. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, thank you, Aaron, and for whatever reason, for featuring our audio. Now, as we announced with the help of Jeff McClelland on episode 159 Inch, Weird Al's graphic novel, The Illustrated Al, will be coming out later this year. We are very, very excited to share that our friend Kelly Phillips is now also involved in The Illustrated Al. We were definitely bummed when her name wasn't involved in the announcement, as she is not only an extremely talented cartoonist and comic creator, she also is the author of Weird Me, which is, as far as we know, the first ever graphic novel solely about Weird Al. And also, as far as we know, the first ever graphic novel with a drawing of me inside of it. Oh, yeah. 
Now that this wrong has been righted and Kelly is officially working on the book, we have a great idea. Yes, of course! Dave and I need to be involved! And we know what you're thinking. Hey, you guys aren't accomplished or cartoonists or comic creators. Well, we know that's silly, and we have that covered, because we already completed all of the artwork for our Weird Al track of choice. In honor of my favorite album, we chose to illustrate the 10 minutes of silence between You Don't Love Me Anymore and Bite Me from the CD Off the Deep End. What's really great about it is it doesn't even really need a lot of room because we're illustrating silence. And it's pretty much a blank page. And if you're worried about where it can go in the book, it can fit anywhere. It can easily be resized to fit half a page, a quarter of a page, an eighth of a page. Really, it could even go in the margin on like one or even all of the pages. All it would require is a listing in the table of contents. 10 minutes of silence, illustrated by Dave Elvis Rossi and Ethan Allman, and a page number for the blank page or section. Come on, Z2 Comics, get to work! Ethan, last episode we listened to your first ever interview with Jim Kimo West on Alternative to Sleeping with Ethan Allman, and this episode we are going to listen to your second interview with him. Yes, the interview we heard on 160 inch was right around when Alpocalypse was being released, and the one from this episode, which aired on October 10th, 2011, was to promote Weird Al's appearance at the Palace Theater in Albany, New York on October 18th, 2011. Right, because you were actually on the radio airwaves, it made sense that you were promoting a local event. Exactly, Dave. All right, Ethan, may I take a shot at describing your radio show? Be my guest! Well, I can't be your guest. You don't do that show anymore. You know what I mean, Dave. Alright, so while you were in college, and for a few years following, you hosted a weekly comedy interview radio show called Alternative to Sleeping with Ethan Ullman on WCDB 90.9 FM and Comedy Pipe Radio. Not only did you interview each and every band member, including Weird Al himself, you also interviewed people like Jimmy Fallon, Margaret Cho, Dr. Demento, and even Golden Globe winner Aquafina in what may have been her first radio interview ever. Very good, Dave! Thank you. If you ever need a fill-in for that radio show, let me know. I'm willing to do it. I'll keep that in mind. All right, intern Frank, let's travel back to October 10th, 2011 for Ethan's second interview with Jim Kimo West. You're listening to Alternative to Sleeping with Ethan Allman here on WCDB Albany 90.9 FM. I'm on the phone with Jim West. Jim, how's it going? I am excellent. How are you doing, Ethan? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for, uh, for calling in once again. No worries. We are enjoying our day off in uh, Red Bank, New Jersey, and it's a beautiful fall day, and uh, life is good. Now, for your days off, do you have, like, an itinerary that you follow, or are you just free to do whatever you want? <laughs> On the days off, you know, it's really just sometimes we'll be uh, traveling overnight, you know, so when we get into our hotel, we just kind of collapse for right. a while. But, right. uh, you know, not, there's no real schedule. I mean, I have my acoustic guitar keep in my in my room, and I uh, I get out, try and see the town a bit, get something to you know, get some lunch or whatever, and then come back and play my guitar and try and get a little exercise in between. It's <laughs> <laughs> about it, you know. So there's Usually no usually days off. It's uh, you know, it's it's such a um, you know, it's a kind of stressful traveling, but uh, so on your days off, you just want to be good to yourself and take it easy. So there's no, like, scheduled uh, miniature golf outings or anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not for us anyway. Everybody kind of goes and does their own thing, and uh, it's fine. We can see each other plenty during the week. You know, right, the right. Work two days. <laughs> no, it's very it's nice. So, uh, now is there anywhere in Albany that you like to go when you're in town? <clears throat> Gee, you know, I... I don't quite remember. I don't think I have anything on my uh, list of, you know, of regular haunts, but, uh, um, you know, I'm always into exploring and getting tips and finding new places and restaurants or a nice quiet bar or something like that. Uh, you know, always looking for fun things to do. Cool. Now, when you guys are going around, do you do the tour bus or do you guys fly to the shows? 
Uh, it's mostly on tour buses, yeah. Okay. We have a, a bus for the crew and a bus for the band because we're on different schedules. Right. And um, there is some flying, but usually we uh, usually the flying is mostly at the beginning of the tour and the end of the tour. And uh, we fly into where the first gig is, and we travel around with a, a big couple of big trucks and a couple of buses, and we um, go from place to place. And then when we're all done, wherever we end up, I think. This particular leg, we end up in New York, and then we will fly back to L.A. Oh, okay. And, and then, then uh, continue on after a week off there. So Yeah, so it's mostly by bus, and it's, uh, you know, I prefer that, because, you, you know, again, going to airports is no fun these days. And right. Staying on the bus, and you can uh, do whatever you want, and then watch uh, movies, and we have satellite TV, we have Wi-Fi, we have the kitchen, we have, uh, you know, I can play my guitar. Oh, cool. All these things that I couldn't do on the plane anyway. So, on the bus, do you guys ever like break out and just start uh, playing a song or something? You know, not really. Um, <clears throat> usually, we don't really, you know, have any loud instruments on there. If I have my guitar, it's usually under headphones or something. Oh, okay. I mean, usually somebody's got the TV on, somebody's watching a show, and but uh, I think maybe in the old days we used to do a little bit of that, but not so much anymore. Oh, okay. So, now, do you have any kids? Do I have kids? No. No? Okay. No, no kids. So that, I guess, makes uh, traveling a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be uh, be hard to be away, I think, if I had kids. That would be tough, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. No, it's uh, it's all good. I, I enjoy it, and uh, I enjoy my time at home, too. But uh, traveling and playing music is fun, too. Yeah nice balance on imdb it says that you're in a, a movie bob roberts and the show tj hooker is that you or was it someone else it wasn't me for either of those <laughs> yeah no it's not me <laughs> <laughs> yeah there must be another jim last i'm sure there's plenty of them out there but uh but yeah no that's not me okay <laughs> now what's your favorite uh on stage costume that you guys wear for this tour Favorite costume? Let me think about that. Oh, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I kind of like the Amish costume because it's just so dramatically different. Right. <laughs> it's kind of it's it's pretty cool, you know. I kind of like that one the most. That would make the, you know, I think that one's the the one that's, that turns me into something completely different. <laughs> yeah. Is is there one that you missed most from other tours that you've done? Well, you know, the Dare to Be Stupid costume was cool. I always thought yeah. that. Was, that was a, I mean, it actually wasn't very comfortable, but it was a cool look. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I kind of wanted to, to grab that costume so I could keep it at home and use it for Halloween parties and stuff. But I never did, but that's a great costume. I love that one. Now, how many different costumes of the same costume are there? Or is it just one for each of you? For every song, for every song there's the same costume. You know, we have... Uh, we just, you know, use the same thing every night, you know. Um, it's all kind of uh, predetermined, but... Uh, do you have to get them dry clean? Same with Al. Yeah, I don't know what they do. I'm sure they do, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, they, we, have a, we have a wardrobe person, so she's in charge of oh, okay. getting stuff sent out and laundered and all that stuff. I don't know what they do, really. Okay. <laughs> I just know that it shows up backstage on a table and I put it on. <laughs> Is it... Is it nerve-wracking, like, having to change into the costume? Um, like, is there enough time to do that, or do the video interludes uh, give you that much time? Well, you know, sometimes it's a little little tight, you know, and um, there's enough time, but if there's any little glitch, that can really mess you up, and sometimes you come running out on stage half-dressed, you know. Right. I get to get out there in time, but... Um, and of course, there's always the occasional time when you uh, are rushing to get dressed and you realize you're on stage and you have the wrong costume on. Oh That's man, all. when's that happen? Like, what? <laughs> what's an example of that? Oh, just every every once in a while, you know. It's like all of a sudden I'm out there with the Amish costume on, and then it's going, Jim, it's not Amish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Amish paradise. It's something else. So it's like, wow, well, that would be interesting. Anyway, <laughs> actually, it can be kind of funny. But do you just stay on stage <laughs> with it? No, I just, you know, took some of it off and, you know, oh, okay. <laughs> I was able to cover myself, you know, but, uh, but anyway, um, 
Yeah, no, it, it can be a little nerve wracking just getting changed. Um, you know, Al's got somebody helping him to do all that, but we're, for the band, we're just on our own, so. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, though. You know, once you, once you have a few shows under the belt, your belt, you kind of have the, you know which songs you need to really, which breaks you need to really hustle on, you know? Right. Yeah. So as far as like the rider goes, like uh, when you guys are backstage, do you have the same food every night, or do they mix it up for you? Well, um, for dinner, yeah, they mix it up. Um, they have a general. You know, I haven't really seen the rider. I know it's uh, you know we always have a nice dinner, and then they're, they're, actually the problem on the on the tour is just too much food, you know, because we have a nice dinner, and then there's all this food in our dressing room and in Al's dressing room. There's all kinds of food in there and fruit cold cuts and right. veggies. They're, oh, it's just tons of stuff, more than you can really eat, you know. And then after the show, there's food, you know, and we have after-show food. So that's the big problem is there's just too much food around. Hmm. So, like, is there any special thing that uh, is not allowed in the dressing rooms? In the dressing rooms, jeez, I don't know. I mean... You know, every venue has its own policy, you know, they all have their own policies. And, I didn't know if you guys are like, uh, no no Dasani water, only Aquafina, or something like that. Is there any... Uh, oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Um, I don't know, you know, like I said, I haven't really seen the, the rider, but, um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a few things on there, you know, yeah. I'm not really sure what, what it is, but, uh, you know, I know Al's dressing room has a little bit different stuff in our dressing room, so... He's got his own list of things. I think he gets chocolate top. That's the one thing I'm jealous about. <laughs> does he share? Um, I think if he gets too much of it, he does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get free? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the rider, so I don't. I don't okay. know. But I know, you know, generally speaking, there's way too much food. <laughs> now, do you get free guitars and instruments and stuff for using certain brands? Oh, um, yeah, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes the uh, companies, you know, um, you know, I don't, you know, I have a, a few companies that I support because I like their, their products, their guitars, and not just guitars, other things, but, um, and a few of them I've had a long association with, and they um, have been really nice, uh, Taylor, Taylor Guitars has been really nice to me, and they, they're now making electric guitars, so um, I've been using some of them on stage, and they're quite good, so, um, They've been really nice to me, and uh, I use their acoustics as well. So, so um, <clears throat> that's my, uh, you know, that's one of the companies that I uh, that really support me. And then uh, I also play Tom Anderson guitars, which are amazing. Um, I don't get them for free, but I get a good deal on them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have any um, custom-made guitars? Well, um, yeah, my Tom Anderson guitars are custom-made. They're, um, I mean, you know. I wouldn't say they were built from scratch, but they, uh, you know, they were built uh, with the kind of neck I like and the kind of, you know, the format I like and everything, and, uh, you know, they were made for me. So I've got two that are really actually custom made. Okay. Now, I'm kind of curious about, um, was there anything done with the couch potato video before Eminem pulled the plug on that? Or was it just a concept? I don't think I don't think there was ever a video. I don't think they ever. I mean, I think there was a concept for it. Okay. I think I'm sure Al had a storyline and concept. I never did see it. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> since there was no, since he wasn't allowed to do it, he didn't. You know, he didn't go ahead with it. Didn't. I don't think they spent any money trying to make something. Um, That's good. <clears throat> as far as I know, I'm not. I'm sure Al had a concept, you know, and had something already on paper, but I never did see it. I'd like to see that actually. I guess I'd always hoped that there maybe there's like a, a two minute video like uh, that would leak somewhere. Yeah, no, not that I know oh, of. Okay. I haven't, uh, um, you know, like I say, probably the closest thing to it, but there might be a, an outline or something that he might have written up, you know, or a storyboard or something like that. that right. Uh, as far as an actual video, no, I don't think so. For your iPod, do you have all of your own music, like all the Weird Al stuff, all your Slack Key stuff? On your own iPod? On my, uh, on my, well, let's see. Um, you know, I don't really have um, much of the Al stuff, you know, uh, Al stuff or my own stuff. I, I guess I do have, on my iTunes on my computer, I do have my stuff on there. 
Yeah. Um, I have, um, I mean, it's mostly, you know, I've heard the elf stuff and my stuff a lot, so I don't really need to hear it that much, but I, um, you yeah. know, it's mostly other stuff. I have a, I keep my music on my iPhone, so I only have a limited amount of memory, so. Oh, okay. I have a lot of other stuff on there. I, I, right now, it really varies. Right now, I just have a lot of, uh, different select guitar stuff and Hawaiian music on, on my iPod, mostly right now. Mm-hmm. Um. I and mean, it's a few other things, but uh, primarily uh, it's like key guitar and Hawaiian music on my iPod right now. But I can change that. I've got a master library and I can sync it and, you know, switch it over and have other stuff. But, uh, yeah, generally I don't, uh, you know, listen to the records. It's fun to hear them from time to time because you sort of forget, you know, what went into them. And, uh, right. So every once in a while I hear them and that's kind of fun. I guess I just... Uh... I'd like to know if, uh, are we ever going to hear Al's band, like, during a concert? Oh, gee. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but, uh, who knows? I wouldn't say never, but, uh, but it's, uh, you know, in the Al show, it's obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the Al show. We don't, you know, we don't right. want to take away from that in any way, you know. It might be a cool, like, interlude, though. Yeah, yeah, it could be a cool interlude, and, and, and you know, as a, uh, I guess in, in, instead of a, a video, there could be a musical interlude that yeah. you know, facilitate a costume change or something. But, uh, yeah, could be. Cool. Could be. Well, now, you've got a new CD coming out soon. Where can we get that, and what's that called? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's called Naolani o Maui, uh, Maui Skies. That means Maui Skies. And it's uh, another uh, Hawaiian slack key guitar CD. And it's a mixture of um, some traditional, some arrangements of some traditional songs and uh, original, you know, new original tunes of mine. And um, it's uh, <clears throat> it's being shipped right now from the manufacturer. So um, I would say, um, you know, if people check my website here, and within the next couple of weeks, I'll have uh, ordering information on it. Uh, oh, cool! And my website is uh, jimkimowest.com. J I M k-i-m-o-w-e-f-t dot com so as soon as it's available I'll put a thing up on my uh, website and I'll be blasting out some Twitter and Facebook stuff as well excellent yeah yeah so it's uh, I'm really proud of it I think it's got some uh, some nice tracks and some really nice uh, photography uh, on the pictures and I think it's going to be good great I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Albany yeah it's going to be fun Shows have been going really well, so I think uh, I think it'll block. Cool, Jim. Thank you so much for <laughs> uh, for the interview again. And uh, no worries. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely say hi uh, when, when you guys are in Albany next week. All right, great. We're looking forward to it, Ethan. All right, thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you. Well, a really big thank you to Jim Kimo West and Ethan Ullman for recording that interview for our podcast so long ago. I mean, I didn't actually record it for our podcast. It was really meant for my... This episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota a beautiful, it's also home to big things. Darwin, Minnesota is the home to something really big. Yeah, Ethan. We've all heard the Weird Al song. Oh no, silly, not that. God? Darwin, Minnesota is home to the world's largest hand-carved multiple pliers. Wow, that's really impressive. But were they made by one man or were they made by a bunch of hooligans? Not only were they made by one man, that one man was the greatest human being to ever live. Charles Nelson Riley? No, Francis A. Johnson, the very same man who rolled the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. Wow, he must have had an awful lot of spare time on his hands. Don't you mean free time? Uh, but yes, indeed. According to the Darwin Twine Ball Museum, Francis sculpted tens of thousands of pliers over his lifetime, with the largest coming in at seven feet tall and unfolding to nearly 20 feet long. And while they open, close, and look functional, they're not. They're sculptures. You know, like totem pole carvings. 
Or like the sculptor of Pat Sajak's head that I made out of mashed potatoes. So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next hand carving expedition. Discover Darwin more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. This is a special hamster alert to the Dave and Ethan's 2000 inch Weird Al podcast broadcast alert system. Going to the pet store, gonna get me a lot of hamsters. Yeah, I'm going to the pet store, gonna get me a lot of hamsters. Oh, the hamsters came from a cage. They were put there by Jack Bateman at a hamster mill downtown. If I had my little way, I'd play with hamsters every day and train them to be our new intern. Yeah. Ethan 1 and Ethan 2, a hamster for me and one for you. Hope they don't run away. Yay, yay. That is all for this week's Hamster Report via the Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast broadcast alert system. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Discover Darwin, Jackson Scoggins, and Jack Bateman. Our podcast is supported by everyone in our Patreon family, with special thanks to our amazing close personal friend level Patreon supporters. Jake, UH Jeff, Kenneth, Scott, Zeb, Adriana, Allison, Blair, Frank from the Bank, Rim Jams, Jared and Rocky, Javier, Nancy, NES Josh, 64, Gus and Alicia, and also special thanks to Sheepdog David Grant at Wolf and Wool Productions and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly, wild, wacky, and weird Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000inch. There are awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast, your own private RSS feed, and access to secret episodes. And now would be a good time to join if you have not already, because you'll be the first to hear our unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour concert review bonus episodes. And do not forget to check out our official merchandise shop over at shop.2000inch.com. The unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent ill-advised vanity tour is underway, so make sure you get your orders in today for your very own We Hate Intern Frank t-shirt so you can share just exactly how you feel about our lousy, rotten, smelly, ugly Intern Frank with everyone on the tour. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so join our Facebook community and post about Weird Al by visiting group.2000inch.com, as well as our brand new Discord server for even more riveting Weird Al-related conversations. Plus, we also love it when we receive voicemail via our official, patent-pending, 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message in a future episode. For everything about our podcast, including incredible past episodes and guests, be sure to visit weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And while you are there, click on Ridiculously Self-Indulgent Bonus Episodes to follow along with our adventures on tour, or click on Black and White and Weird All Over Bonus Episodes for our special bonus episode book series where author John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his book page by page and picture by picture. Keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for subscribing and leaving awesome reviews on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you're subscribed because it not only helps the podcast, but it's high in fiber and low in fat, protein, and sugar. Thank you once again to Jim Kimo West for joining us all the way from 2011. Thank you also to Ethan Allman, Alternative to Sleeping with Ethan Allman, WCDB 90.9 FM, Comedy Pipe Radio, Chris Sear, the cartoon-loving geek from Canada, Scott Sorensen and his adorable little kitten, Kevin McKee, Mike Middick, and the Darwin Twineball Museum, and for whatever reason. Thank you to the Grammy Award-winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song, and thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. And a big thanks to all of you, our loyal listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast. And until next time, Red Rump the Goody. And remember to gill and chill. 
You know what? I was thinking a little bit more about Scott Sorensen and his cute little adorable kitten. Oh, well, did you come up with some other names? Well, no, actually, I still stand by my suggestion of Invisible Jim. Well, it is a pretty good suggestion, Dave. Well, thank you. Well, I'm glad to hear that the Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West is back on stage and visible again. But it got me thinking that nickname was pretty cool and we should probably transfer it to someone else now. Oh, well, who do you have in mind? Our lousy intern, Frank. I wish he really was invisible. Now that would be pretty stinking majestic. That was Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 161 Inch. We wish our intern was an invisible hamster. I think he gets chocolate. That's the one thing I'm jealous about. Gah?